The doctor refused to acknowledge and admit that he violated the basic standards of medical care. Come join me as I share with you exactly why it is critical for me to get the doctor to actually admit during pretrial testimony why he violated the basic standards of medical care. You want to learn more? Come join me as I share with you this great information today. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury trial lawyer practicing law in the state of New York. Today I'm coming to you from Baltimore, Maryland, where I'm at the American Association of Justice seminar, and now I want to share this great information with you for a few moments. So now, this is a case involving a doctor, an anesthesiologist, who improperly administered an anesthetic medication that caused my patient to suffer a cardiac arrest. And because he administered the medication improperly, the surgery had to be canceled, the patient continued to have ongoing problems, and now, during the course of pretrial testimony, it was critical for me to establish that the doctor violated the basic standards of care. Why is that? So that now, when we get to trial a year or two later, now I can put the doctor up on the witness stand and use his testimony from the question and answer session that he gave under oath to now show to the jury that what he did was improper. So how do we do that? I do that by first asking the doctor what are the standards of care in a situation involving this particular type of patient. Before ever getting into the details of our case, I need the doctor to go ahead and explain what are the standards of care in treating a patient with this particular problem. And now the doctor has no alternative but to tell me what good medical practice is. And once the doctor goes ahead and gives me those different steps, what we call the rules of the road, the standards of good basic medical care. Now when I get into the details of what actually happened to my client, I can then point out saying, doctor, isn't it true that my client did X, Y, and Z? And now when you went ahead and treated him and gave him that injection, because you didn't do these following things, that would be a violation from the basic standards of care. And ultimately, through a series of not just 10 or 20 or 30 different questions, we drill down and focus specifically on each and every action that the doctor did or did not do. Because it's critical for me to get the doctor to acknowledge, even hypothetically, doctor, would you agree that in this scenario, if you did not do A, B, and C, that would be a violation from the basic standards of medical care? So why do I share this great information with you? I share it with you to give you an insight and an understanding to what goes on in the litigation process in a medical malpractice case in the state of New York. You know, I realize you're watching this because you probably have questions or concerns about your own particular matter. So what should you do? Well, if you have legal questions, what I encourage you to do is pick up the phone and call me. I can answer your legal questions. You know, this is something I do every single day and I'd love to talk to you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski lawcom That's it for today's quick video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a great day.